Hold with them, right. what looks like a Tesla coil. So it should be. It joined. TFR just joined. Okay, so are we live? <laughs> Can anyone out there who's listening who who survived the ringtones? Are we live? Somebody, somebody, write back to me. Or Sound listen. Check on TFR. Are we? <laughs> are we talking on TFR? Yeah, Bob says you are live. Oh, thank God. Okay. All right. Uh, um, here we go. Stop breathing. Whoever's breathing over there. <laughs> Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship currently at war with mainstream science. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is grateful that he lives in a country with the best free election policies in the world. A country that will ensure every vote is counted, even if you lived in the 1900s and are currently dead. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger in fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, well, you're just not very good at the Internet. For those of you listening to this on YouTube, you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern, and yes, Caroline, if it is not November 10th in the year of our Lord, 2020, then you are listening to a rerun. Quote of the day goes exactly like this. The people who cast the votes decide nothing. The people who count the votes decide everything. Who said that? Yep, my grandfather, Joseph Stalin. My co-host is lovely, she's sometimes sassy, and always the best Flat Earth conference, conference promoter ever, Karen B. How are you, Karen? I'm just great, Mark. How are you? You know what? Now that we got the show up and running. <laughs> Better? <laughs> I'm hoping I don't have to do a lot of editing. I hope that the first part of the recording wasn't six minutes of a Skype ringtone. That I, I, but that should be easy enough to cut out. And thank you, by the way, all those people that were listening to that ringtone for minutes on end and not going nuts. Uh, hey, Karen, before we bring in our special guest, uh, do you know what the best Flat Earth app is in the whole world? I do. I know you do. Because it's from our friend DITRH, who created the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. If every Flat Earther either gifted or at least shared the Flat Earth Clock app with just one person every week, the entire world would know the Earth is flat in less than a year and probably get accurate election results. Watch the featured video every day for two weeks and see what happens. It'll be the best $2.99 you've ever spent. Uh, a couple quick announcements, because uh, people like sending me physical stuff in the in the mail, and if you want to know what my actual mail address is, it's in the description box of every single video I've made, so there's like 1,400 of them out there, and I was sent a, a, a um, conspiracy coloring book, I think I sent you guys the link, uh, called um, Think of Something, it's on Amazon, and it's from Avery Neal. And his email address, if you want to, you want to check it out, or go. You can type that into Amazon. But it's really, really cool. It's a, it's a neat coloring book, and it's got all these cool conspiracies and uh, fun stuff. His email address is Neil Avery M, as in Mark, at gmail.com. Neil Avery M, or just type in his name, Avery Neil, on Amazon, and you will find it. So thank you, Avery, for sending me that. And again, anyone else wants to send me? The holidays are coming up, so I'm, I'm expecting care packages with all sorts of fun stuff. People send me some weird stuff uh, over the years, and uh, I, I love getting packages. You don't have to send me cookies or candles, although candles are, are, are great. I'm burning one right now, as a matter of fact. <sighs> okay. That being said, are you ready, Karen? Mm-hmm. I met an interesting guy at the, well, let's just call it the best Flat Earth conference that ever was, yes. otherwise known as Flattoberfest Apalooza Stock. That's it right. Is- that's right. <laughs> out, out in Greenville, South Kakalaki. Uh, yes, sir. With, with, <laughs> with, it was hosted by uh, Karen B. And she did just an amazing job. Phenomenal job. Tremendous. Phenomenal. Thank you. And uh, I met a wonderful guy there. His name is Sean Griffin. And he told me, and I don't know how much information I can give away, so I'll let him do most of the talking. 
Uh, he told me that there's a new platform coming out, new video uploading platform that may rival YouTube. And, the, and it's perfect timing because there's a whole bunch of censorship, as you guys know. There's channels are going down right and left all over the place. You know, YouTube, once it got very big and once it was bought out by Google and a lot of um, uh, corporate interests were involved, uh, they've been whacking channels. And some people call it censorship. Some people call it no shirt, no shoes, no service. But uh, whatever, there's I, I knew it was going to happen. You know, I, I've, I warned people. I said, look, YouTube's got to be careful because MySpace used to be a thing and it's not anymore. And it doesn't take, you know, all it takes some money and some servers and some some right people to create a new thing. And you could, you could build a new platform fairly quickly. And these guys look like they might be headed in that direction. So without further ado, uh, phone sex operator, Sean Griffin. Sean, are you there? I'm here. Thanks for having me on, Mark. Wonderful. I, just to let you know, I'm naked as well, even though I, your camera isn't on. Um, no, I'm messing with you. So <laughs> let, let's let's break it down. I'm 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 messing with you because it's okay. I had to take my it's shots right. in. Uh, the, so give us give us the breakdown. Give us the 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 full tour. I don't know if it's the nickel tour or if it's the dollar tour or whatever. Let's let's get into it. What is Lighthouse? How have you been involved? What is your ties to Flat Earth? Why did you go to the conference and all this other stuff? Sure. Uh, what is Lighthouse? It's going to be a new platform that in integrates video, social, and a marketplace all in one easy-to-use platform. So we've taken the best of Facebook, the best of YouTube, and the best of Etsy, and we've integrated it into one platform that will help a people that create channels, that create content for the channels, as well as marketplaces and sell products there, as well as just you know social media icons, brand influencers, people that have a following on social media. It's going to help those people gain a bigger audience, a further reach faster than any other social media out there because we've taken the best of these ideas and put them into one. And the biggest issue is we're not going to organize the algorithms to censor you. So we're very excited to bring it. It's actually been in project for over a year now. So you, in your open introduction, you are correct. If the people have the right means and the right idea, they can create an alternative. We've seen those alternatives pop up already with, you know, YouTube's alternatives, you have things like MeWe, excuse me, things like Vimeo, things like DLive, things like BitChute, Brighteon. But the reason why those haven't taken off is because there's already a YouTube. Right. Same thing for Facebook, right? You get MeWe pops up. All, I don't know if you've heard of All Social that popped up recently. Um, you've also got um, other various attempts at mimicking what Facebook does. But that's that's all they're doing is mimicking what Facebook does. Same thing with Parler is the you know the new version of Twitter that people are moving over to because of Twitter censorship. And while Parler, all those all those other platforms are great, they really are. Uh, they offer uh, most of them offer no censorship, but at the same time, they're just versions of something that somebody else has already done better. Uh -huh. And this is where we stepped up and we said, all right, well that's why they're not succeeding. So we need to integrate from the ground up. We need to completely uh, innovate an idea that nobody's done. And as someone that owns a YouTube channel myself and has run it for three years, I have multiple channels actually, and creates content, um, interacts in social media all the time, and studies the platforms on how to reach greater audiences, I saw a bunch of loopholes. I saw a bunch of, I actually, you know, I've never been a, a technically a business analyst or a efficiency specialist, but um, people have told me I should be one because I, I, these kinds of loopholes pop out to me often. And so I put those together and and uh, spoke with some people that um, could make this a reality, and they really loved the idea. They also saw the philosophical need for the idea, which was the censorship that's geared towards steering, you know, a narrative even to the point of major politics. Right. And so the folks that got involved in this, they thought it was a a pressing need in our in our culture and our nation, and in this point in history, to have an alternative of free speech. But there are other, other alternatives that have tried that, right? I mean, we know Parler's trying to do free speech. MeWe tries to do free speech. But the, how do you make it successful? How do you actually compete against the big boys? And we think that we've actually done that. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That, that's the that, music to my ears. 
So, in in the timing, so you guys got involved just when the censorship, the when YouTube was really starting to ratchet down, back well at least a year ago. Uh, you know, we started you know, the Flyers community started getting cracked before that. But uh, and then you, ha- so you know, you don't have to give away trade secrets or anything like that. But how would you get get a hold of the right people? And you don't have to name names. I okay, mean, you can speak in generalities if you want. That's fine. Well, yeah, basically there's a, someone that reached out to me because they found my YouTube channel and they were asking me questions about uh, the content that I talk about on my channel. And he had actually been a, a, a supporter, a financial supporter of my channel for eight or nine months previous to us actually having this conversation. And I didn't know who he was or what he does. Um, so I just was interacting with them like everyone else that asked me questions of course, you know, from the content on my channel that sends me messages or whatever. Um, and, and as you guys know, once your channel gets to a certain point, you just can't get to all the messages. So I, I was slowly reaching that point, but thankfully I hadn't reached that point yet because I, I interact, interacted with this gentleman enough for him to feel confident with me and comfortable with me where he actually wanted to talk on the phone with me, which some people offer to do that, you know, um, right off the bat. They don't know you at all, but because they've been watching your channel for years, they feel like you're their best friend and they want to enter They want to call you right off the bat. You, you've never met them before. So I, I did actually answer the phone and I, I spoke with this guy. We spoke for like an hour and a half and we just, you know, as two men, like had we just met, you know, uh, randomly at some event, we probably would have hit it off as friends anyway. So it was a, it was a natural, um, you know, connection of just like-minded, um, similar personalities, similar goals in life. Yet, he actually owns multiple companies and is very, very accomplished in what he does and his history. So we get to talking and, and we're actually trying to create a separate program, um, for, for something else. And while we're brainstorming that and planning that, I start mentioning how all these people are getting axed from YouTube. And he asked, he he doesn't really keep up with a lot of social media or YouTube because he owns multiple businesses and is very busy. And so he, he was trying to figure out why he, was, he just, he was kind of perplexed, you know? And I said, well, a lot of their content is either, you know, is not along the mainstream narratives of what this culture is trying to propagate mm-hmm. or they just, YouTube doesn't like them because of their political or religious leanings. Right. And he said, well, that's, that's horrible. Why would they do that? And I was like, well, <laughs> let me red pill you into this world. <laughs> right. So that's basically that conversation then led to how uh, Patreon started kicking people from their platform. One yeah. of the more famous people was a uh, Sargon of Akkad. And then there's some other people that we know that were kicked off as well. But then he started, he did some digging on his own and realized that Patreon was being influenced by MasterCard to actually boot people from their platform. And that's a much, much bigger deal than people realize. Yeah. Cause then we're getting into banking. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Wow. So this is where, um, it, he was, he suddenly saw bells go off and red flags and he was like, well, okay, this is, this is serious. Cause literally your opinion can get you, you know, can get you that gold star and now you can't even bank, you know, and this is a huge deal. Um, especially with people he knows. So he, um, he himself, uh, you know, he's a former financial analyst. He's a business consultant and specializes with algorithms and uh, user interface design. And so he's been an implement, you know, a, a very important part of this process. But uh, a couple of the other owners of Lighthouse, uh, one of them is a, a former CIO of multiple Fortune 500 companies. She was also a Marine, or you know, as Marines go, they're Marine for life. Uh-huh. She's still a she's still a Marine. <laughs> um, and uh, and then of course the chief architect, he'd also worked for um, Fortune 50 companies as well. Uh-huh. And so it's the, together they got their, you know, they got together, and I. I uh, gave them a six and a half hour presentation <laughs> and we had a long, long day in Boulder, Colorado last year. And they, they thought it was a philosophically poignant, um, financially viable. And as a form of business model, they thought it was a wonderful challenge because of, you know, they, they, they see how Facebook and Twitter are. And, uh, they thought they were very simplistic sites. And I said, well, that's apparent, apparently that's what the people need is they need something simple and easy to use. Yeah. that their eyes can easily understand. And more than anything, they want to connect with people, but because of the way the algorithms have been engineered, because of the way all the advertising has, has come into play in these programs, people are actually being tribalized into groups and they're not interacting. And this is why Twitter is considered the, you know, the cesspool of, of ideology 
of, of being attacked, harassed, bullied, and extreme far left wing ideology among all the uh, social media platforms. In fact, there was a statistic that, that they put out about um, 90% of the users of Twitter are extreme left leaning in their political ideology. And out of those 90%, um, they 10% of those 90% make up the majority of the posts on Twitter. If that, wow. if that makes any sense. So that's why whenever conservative voices get on Twitter, it's just nothing but constant strife and argumentation and, you know, and mocking and name calling and things like that. And I don't know if you guys have ever um, seen how even Twitter has just recently been called before Congress to make, you know, to ex to explain why they were not only banning the president's account, but also other congressmen's account who are oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. politically conservative. And so, in fact, one of the guys, they took down one of his posts. He's actually one of the head bill writers for Section 230. Are you guys familiar with Section 230? No. It's basically in 1994, the Congress put together a bill that is part of um, internet communication. It's actually called the um, Communication Decency Act. And the whole idea was that online providers like, you know, YouTube and Facebook and Google, they could not be held accountable for the comments that people would say on their websites because it was supposed to be a hosting platform right. and not an actual publisher. But when Twitter starts censoring people, and Facebook does this too, they start censoring people unfairly according to their political leanings, and they don't do, they don't censor people evenly across the board for the same behaviors. That's when you start becoming a publisher according to legal guidelines. And one of the gentlemen on Twitter was actually part of, he's a representative from Missouri, and he's actually part of the people that have written new bills about internet censorship recently. And Twitter actually censored one of his <laughs> one of his comments. Oh no! <laughs> so that that guy immediately called um, Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter. They called him before Congress uh, to to berate him um, because they're they just feel like they're trying to manipulate elections during this specific season of 2020. Right. But it's it's much grandiose than that. As you talked about, 2017 was what a lot of YouTubers referred to as the adpocalypse. Yeah, and that's apocalypse. where yeah. yeah that they, they started changing the guidelines for how they did advertising. Um, no, no surprise, by the way, that 2017 was one of the first years YouTube made ridiculous profit. And I don't, a lot of people may not realize this about YouTube, but you know, when they started as a company back in 2005, they didn't turn a profit for almost nine, 10 years. Yeah. I heard this. Yeah. yeah. So in the business world, this is kind of the eyebrow raise amongst people that are. Yeah. What's, have, what's holding them up for exactly. nine, 10 years. Yeah. Because they supposedly weren't bought by Google until what, 20, 2010, 2011? Yeah. So, how in the world did they stay alive and, and be able to afford all that bandwidth? Even during the early days of YouTube, there were right. still hundreds of millions of people using it. So, that's, that's the big question is like, how have they been going like they have? And then they changed their ad model, they changed how they do things, they started the premium service that you can do. And then suddenly they're turning a, a $10 billion profit every year. Right. Right. Very yeah. suspicious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But did that, yeah. But again, where did the initial, you know, capital come from, and and was it all part of the plan? Right, because that's actually been one of our biggest uh, hurdles that we had to figure out was how do we afford the bandwidth within the server systems and all the servers that would need to be used in order for us to open up a new social media. And by the way, what I'm about to explain is what the other attempts, the other competitors with Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Etsy, what, what they've had to deal with as well. Okay. In fact, I remember the, the owner of Brighton making an actual public statement about this last year. He was having to cut gamers from his channel because he just couldn't afford the bandwidth because wow. they have to have a, they have to have a revenue model for them to actually host these videos and afford the bandwidth they're taking up from, um, or the server space, I guess they're taking up to, to stream and store and, and recall the data. So, if a company comes out and they start and, you know, you don't have tens of millions of dollars in reserve in order to right. just pay until you get enough revenue generated. Or if you're if your actual video hosting site or social media site doesn't actually have a way to produce revenue, then suddenly you've got a YouTube situation, which is why right. Google supposedly had to come in and buy them out. Right. So this this makes it very difficult for people to actually bring valid competition to the big boys right now. But thankfully, we have figured out some very clever ways to overcome that. So we actually have specialized uh, code that was written by our chief ar architect. Hey, uh, so Sean, that we can, yes. So we're, we're coming up to our first break. So okay. we will, and normally we, you would have had a few extra minutes, but we'll come, we'll come back uh, in three minutes 
And we will continue the conversation with Sean Griffin from Lighthouse. And uh, in fact, the chat room is already asking, and we'll get into that probably in this next segment, which is, uh, does it cost subscribers? What happens with the monetization? What what are the what are the 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 money dynamics of this whole thing? So don't go anywhere. Do we have music now? Yes, I hear it coming in. Hey, there we go. <laughs> it works. Yes. Anyway, don't go anywhere. Back in three minutes. That means you too, Sean. Don't go anywhere. All right. Welcome back to Strange World, part two of four. We have with us uh, Sean from Lighthouse. Uh, we were just finishing off uh, all of John Denver's greatest hits, but just then, <laughs> yeah, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album, Karen. Night and day. Night and day, indeed. And uh, Peanut Gallery says, make sure to make sacrifice to Alex Trebek so we can stay on the air. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Alex Trebek passed recently the uh, sometimes arrogant host of Jeopardy for the last 130 years. And um, every time a, a famous person uh, dies, we experience technical difficulties. And tonight was a doozy, let me tell you. All right, so let's get right back to it. We are speaking with uh, what could be the next YouTube or at least competition for YouTube. Um, one of the guys that's spearheading the whole thing, Sean Griffin. Sean, are you still there? I'm still here. Good. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Now, Sean, is it, now, when you were explaining Lighthouse to me in the brief short time that I did get to speak with you, because I was busy. You I was were. Like, <laughs> putting on a great conference, yeah. <laughs> but um, it seems like it's more than just a competition for YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's like a competition for YouTube and Facebook and like possibly even a little bit of Etsy. It's like multiple things wrapped up in one. Yeah, a whole, a whole lot of Etsy and, and Amazon sellers and eBay. Yeah. So we're, we're the Rodney Dangerfield running into the room and stepping on everybody's toes and dancing with people's wives at this point. Yeah. So we're, we're very excited to see how they're going to try to attack us um, right out the gate. Yeah. So during our planning meetings, we've, it's so funny. We're, we have like late night zoom calls with developers and with the, the, the UI designer and things like that. And we would have these uh, zoom calls for the past year and we would see the, the recording light just come on randomly when no one pressed it. <laughs> hmm. And if you've noticed, Facebook has changed its design in the past uh, year where now everything's much more rounded off in its corners, more bubbly. Uh, this is what you're going to see when very close to what you're going to see when Lighthouse launches. Um, they've literally taken our, in fact, they've even um, just recently as of yesterday, they uploaded in the comment sections of groups. They actually allow you to share comments now. And that was one of the features that we're employing in Lighthouse, which is truly just a takeoff of what Twitter does when you can retweet someone's specific comment and not the original post. So we were going to add that as because of the way we've actually integrated our comment section below videos and below social posts, um, it's actually integrated and mirrored as one. And so that without being able to show you visuals tonight, that's uh, the best, probably the best way I can explain it. But the idea that we were going to allow, you know, say, for example, you take this radio broadcast, you upload it to your YouTube channel and you get some hilarious comments that you think are just fitting to the to the video and hilarious and you would love to be able to just share that comment with the video link attached to your socials because you know that'll draw a lot of attention to that video lighthouse will let you do that but now suddenly facebook just <laughs> implemented that idea yesterday so it's it's very it's you know and i don't know if youtube's going to catch up and they're going to try to allow you, let you share comments but, but all of these platforms have are they're already leaning towards what lighthouse has already created which is a, a true integration of a marketplace, a video hosting platform site, and a social media. So many, you may have noticed on YouTube, for certain content providers or certain content creators that have a big enough following, they uh, they can have a store and sell products. And that little Teespring link will show up right you know below the comments and above the other recommended videos. And if you go into their actual main channel profile, you can go you know past the community tab and you'll see the store tab pop up if that channel qualifies. So what they're trying to do already, but they have it so segmented because they didn't design their website like we did from the get-go to have them all integrated. They're having to work backwards now with, with millions of lines of code 
after 12, 15 years. So that's why they have a video hosting platform. They have a community button on YouTube and then they have a store button, but they're not integrated. So this is why we were like, well, let's just make one that's fully integrated. And I promise you guys, this is not easy that the UI designer creating the logic for all this. I mean, that was nights nice pulling our hair out because of how complicated it was, you know, to actually make it seamless, to make it simple to use and actually have everything communicate and talk behind the scenes. So this is where you've noticed on Facebook, they have a, you know, the traditional Facebook has a social media, but they also have the marketplace where people can post really bad pictures of stolen Jordans or iPhones and, you know, in a local region and try to sell them, or they can do the, um, the Facebook watch, which is, I think they're trying to create some sort of competition to maybe like a streaming service, um, like an Amazon prime type concept, but they're just not there yet. If you ever clicked on a video on Facebook, it turns into a wholly, totally different user interface. It's a black screen and there's other random videos that just auto play right after your video. No yeah. one has a channel. There's no organization. There's, there's none of that. So unless they're trying to build that right now, maybe they are, but either way, if, even if they outfit their Facebook watch to be more organized like YouTube, they still won't have integrated their marketplace or their social media. Lighthouse has already done it. So that's why we have a patent on our, um, on our actual platform on our site. So nice. yeah, and it's going to be free for everyone to use to answer the question from the chat. Um, I also see people asking if it will mirror your content from YouTube. Like if you already have a current YouTube channel, will, will it download your content and mirror it? Now, unfortunately, there's just no, no viable way to do that because, and that's where you're going to get into the, um, you know, just like if they were leaving face YouTube and we're trying to upload everything to Brighteon or, or to another platform like BitChute, um, there's just no, because the, the formatting is all different. Um, the, the way that we actually are allow a, a simple, simple step-by-step -step process to upload a video. And it, it's not just uploading the, the video file, the thumbnail, the title and description. We also give you the opportunity to connect with other users on the platform. And that's part of our patented partner program. And this is the part where, as you know, all of us are content creators talking now, hopefully this is the most engaging and exciting part of the platform, mm -hmm. but without having visuals to show and just talking audio tonight, um, I'll do my best to explain it. But imagine mm -hmm. all of us were already on lighthouse and imagine, you know, my, my YouTube channel only has, um, 9,090 viewers or subscribers right now. But, uh, Mark, I think yours has like 90,000. Is that yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. So imagine Mark that you, you met me. You like some of the content I was doing. You saw that I was still a few years behind you as far as how long I've been on YouTube. I was still up and coming and you, you wanted to promote me. Well, the next video that you upload, you can go into the partner program and you can actually connect your uploaded video to one of my videos so that my video is in the autoplay right after your video uh -huh. so that you bypass the normal algorithm in order to promote me. Instead of having to, you know, put my link in the video description and take time out of your video to call, you know, give me a shout out or whatever. You can still edit it out if you wanted to, but we've actually made it at the touch of a button easier to connect with other content creators, other people that sell products, other people that are influencers on social media and connect their efforts with your efforts at the touch of a button when you're either uploading a post, uploading a video or uploading a product in your marketplace. One more quick example. Mm -hmm. um, imagine you have say you, you know, you and I did, uh, make a friendship. We connected. You wanted to see me grow. You uploaded a new video and then you asked me to make a part two to that video where you can, as you're uploading your video, you can click me as one of your partners and then choose the video that you want to connect to yours. And then since we're partners, all of your users, all of your, excuse me, all of your subscribers will be notified of both of our videos being premiered at the same time. And then all of my smaller subscriber base would be notified of your video and my video coming out at the same time. So that way we're sharing audiences for that video. That's cool. Nice. Yeah. So That's imagine, very, very cool. you, you know, you, you get noticed by someone that has, you know, 2 million subscribers and you're only at sitting at 300,000 subscribers, you know, like uh, last week I interviewed ODD, uh, Matt Purcell from ODD TV. Mm -hmm. I think he's still about 300,000 subscribers, but he's been heavily censored. Yes. You know, with, with the amount of content and the type of content he has, if he hadn't started getting censored three and a half years ago, he, sh he would easily be near a million 
subscribers at this point. Probably. But yeah, he's just been heavily, heavily censored. And, you know, if he if he wanted to grow, he may find someone that's got double the subscribers of him. They link up in the partner program. They share each other's audiences for for as many videos as they want or for only one video. It depends on what what strategy they have and what they communicate. So that's just from content creator to another content creator. But we've actually integrated it so easily <laughs> that if you are someone that you know sells on Amazon seller or Etsy marketplace and you have products, someone could be watching your video, Mark, and they say they could say, you know what, I love his shirts that he offers, but I'm an actual T-shirt designer as well as you know all types of other other products for the home, like bags and all all types of other stuff you might see on Teespring. But mm-hmm. they have incredible artwork, so they actually offer a T-shirt they made just for you and for your channel. They can, while watching your video, they can click the menu button and they can click product offer and they can offer you a product through the partner program and say, with your video, I would like for my t-shirt to be visible on the left-hand side of the screen while your video is playing, or if it's on the mobile, it'll be below the video so that your marketplace items that you're selling, which are always visible while your videos are playing, you can actually share a space in your marketplace for someone else's product to be viewed while your video is playing because they have incredible artwork or it's an incredible product that complements your efforts. And in that case, you guys through the partner program can negotiate um, what kind of split you want to take from the sales of those products. That way she gets extra exposure. You get, you've already done the hard work. You've already made your video. Now you just have other people asking to promote their products during one of your videos or multiple videos, whatever you guys decide. And then you just, uh, can actually make some extra revenue from them putting their product up in in your marketplace while your video is playing. Nice, nice. It's good stuff. Um, a couple quick questions. Um, this one came from inside Skype chat. You probably already saw it. Will Lighthouse and we got to talk about the name here in a second because I, I, I'm not mistaken. There's two eyes in Lighthouse, right? It's three eyes. Oh, there's three eyes. Uh, we'll we'll get to that in one second. Um, yeah. Pe- thank you, Peanut Gallery. Uh, will Lighthouse have live streaming? 100%, yes. Very cool. Why the three eyes in Lighthouse? Was it a, because, just a trademark because, thing? You couldn't... Yeah, because Chinese companies have bought every domain alive, known to man, and every variation. They're, they're, to try to find an actual regular word with a .com behind it, or even a, a .net, it's, someone owns it already. The, it they, is, we, they're domain squatting everything? Yes, and they're charging what through the nose for it? Ridiculous. Like, I mean, some of them we saw were as, as little as $5,000 for the domain. Others were $170,000 for a domain. Wow. So we, we were actually, we thought as we were developing the site further and further, and we spent about two and a half months just settling on the name and finding the right domain um, that was available. We, uh, <laughs> we realized that, you know, there's three intelligent parts of the platform that are all integrated. And so, you know, we thought, all right, well, let's, what if, what if Lighthouse with three eyes uh, and, you know, the red eye and the logo represents the video, the blue eye represents the social, and then the green represents the marketplace. So what if we just spelled it with three eyes and then, and lo and behold, that was actually an available domain. So it's not really like the most romantic origin story of the name. It's more practical, (laughs) but it actually does relate to the site. And that's why we actually made it the logo, the three eyes, red, blue, and green. Nice. Nice. Uh, another question. Uh, how are you going to keep YouTube, Google, Alphabet, Lizard overlords from copying or stealing the features of your platform? Because it sounds like you guys have some wonderful ideas, but as you know, you know everybody steals from everybody. Right. We do have a patent, um, but ultimately we know it's not going to stop them 100% from stealing or right. sharing what they would call adapting um, parts of their platform to, to, more, to be more similar to what we're going to offer. But the partner program, which is how we allow content creators, store owners, and brand influencers actually connect with each other and make more money than they ever would on on YouTube or Facebook or Etsy, they'll right. never be that's patented. They'll never be able to take that. Um, and if they they might try, uh, we do we we will not be surprised if there are legal battles in the first two years of Lighthouse launching. But um, ultimately, the the big draw for us is that they've already done our job for us. They've ticked off tens of millions of people. And this is going to be something that we, we're we providing an option for them, not only with enhanced features to grow your business faster, to reach new audiences, to actually, you know, 
just go back to life as normal. You can just post nonsense stuff and not get fact checked. You know what I mean? We're not we're not yeah. going to have a team of thousands of people fact checking your opinions because yeah. we we actually have a, you know we're strong first and second amendment supporters. We believe that you can speak freely. We truly yeah. believe like we understand that if we allow a discussion about controversial topics, say like the Rona or abortion, if we allow those things to continue to happen on the site through free discourse, the truth will rise to the top and we're not right. afraid of the truth, whatever, wherever it leads. Mm. Um, but, you know, which begs the question when corporations get involved, because sooner or later, if you guys, you, you know how it goes. I mean, yeah. you, you've been in business. I mean, you, you generate enough, make enough waves and people will come to you and say, Hey, look, we'd like to uh, help finance this operation, you know, and, and what uh, you're going to just basically hold out as long as you can. The owners, uh, they've talked about it and they decided that, you know, they're, they're not, they didn't start this, uh, this whole project to make money. Oh, they, okay. they, they have money. <laughs> Got it. These folks are well accomplished in life. So this is to them, this is more of a, there's a need that the, the country has, the people, um, and I, you know, I'm not about to break out into, you know, seeing an American waving a flag. But at the same time, they are patriots. They are strong supporters of this nation and its basic premise and ideal of being able to just live your life freely without too much interference and without being um, having some sort of tyrannical overreach into your life. Right. And they they think that, you know, what started out as a really incredible thing, this idea of the Internet and social media, they see that there is a slowly tightening net no pun intended, World Wide Web, but yeah. there's there's a slowly tightening net on free speech. Yeah. And there historically that only leads to warfare. Right. So they're doing the best they can to stop that momentum in its tracks, give give the people a voice, a true voice that will and of course, again, I know people would say, Well, Sean, yeah, come on now. I mean, me we gives people a true voice, parlor gives people a true voice. Um, if you have a particular ideological leaning, specifically a liberal one. Twitter gives you all the voice you want. Right. So what, what stop it? But those do not allow people to grow the way that we're going to allow them to grow their business, their channel, their, their influence. So this is the, the bigger issue as far as yes, all those platforms out there in a heartbeat, they could, they could give people a voice if they chose. But unfortunately the people that own them have a specific I, political leaning and an agenda they're following, which is why they're doing the ever increasing censorship. But with those platforms, none of them were designed like we've designed Lighthouse in order to help people make more money, reach more audiences, get your message out further and faster and without censorship. So that's Great. going to be the draws. We have the business people coming over, integrating with the content creators. If you, it, Mark, if you could have your videos, if, if Etsy, which has 32 million stores mm -hmm. and hundreds of millions of views per day in traffic, if you could have your videos play just one out of every hundred thousand views on Etsy, your you would skyrocket. Your life would change forever, because you suddenly be integrated into a totally different platform. And if you could actually, as an Etsy owner, if you could actually upload a true video channel to promote your products mm -hmm. and coordinate with other other stores for cross promotion and increased reach, these people would be growing like crazy. But instead, if you ever talk to someone that's participated with Etsy to try to sell products, it's very difficult. It takes them almost thirty minutes to upload one product with the description. It takes Oof. literally less than 30 seconds on, on, on Lighthouse for them to upload their, their product thumbnails, put their, video, put their description in and whatever purchasing options they have, click confirm when they're done. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. And so um, this whole concept is there's going to be people from three different genres of internet interaction, people that love video content, people that love social interaction on, on social media news feeds, and people that love online selling they're going to all find a reason to come to Lighthouse. And that's what's going to make us stand out and actually be true competition. So, no, I'm excited. Sold. Yeah, no, it's great. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, we're going to take pretty soon, I've, I've got a couple questions myself, but we're also going to take questions from the audience. So if you want to call in and, and ask questions to Sean, the number is 213-233-3998. That's 213. Drink of water, 233-3998. <laughs> <laughs> Operators are standing by, and by that I mean me. And, and Karen, did you have another question? I apologize if I didn't get to your second one. Um, I don't know. I don't remember. Um, okay. But a lot of people are asking when it launches. 
Yes. December. Did we already address that? December. December. That's right. Do we know yeah. a day in December? Or Not just yet. December? Yeah, December. That's hopefully, our, I, hopefully I would say before Christmas? Yes, tentatively mid-December. <laughs> yeah. Very, but very cool. And what, what will people expect to see in December? I mean, you, is there going to be a big, I mean, is any, any special things when the site first comes up? Well, we're about to start our uh, official advertising campaign here in the next couple of weeks uh, where we'll be, I mean, as long as, you know, <laughs> Facebook lets us actually pay for advertising, we'll see how that goes. Because mm. um, they've already censored our, our Lighthouse group on Facebook. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, we were. I'm sorry? I'm, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Yeah, we were growing uh, 500 people a day. And then they, they shut it down. So now we're, I mean, we're still growing, but it's much, much smaller. And people are sharing the posts within the group uh, uh, like crazy. But those shares do not reach as many people as I've noticed on anybody else's profile. Because, you know, when, when you actually have a group or a page, they actually give you uh, if you own that group or page in Facebook, they'll show you a, a short analytic below the post of how many people it's reached. So, for example, on pages that I own outside of Lighthouse, if people share it, say, 50 times, I might reach 10,000 people or I might reach 8,000 people. We've had posts in Lighthouse that I get shared 300 times and it reaches 6,000 people. Wow. Right. Shit. And it'll have, you know, three, 400 likes and reactions. So... We we already know that people have already been telling us they putting screenshots in the group that they've tried to share posts from the group and then they'll get a notice saying it goes against community standards. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I've not seen anything on Facebook about Lighthouse. Yeah, not go to Lighthouse the group uh, Lighthouse dot com. Search groups for Lighthouse dot com and you're welcome to join the group. I'm gonna. So. Um, Peanut Gallery actually asked a question. I'm not sure if I understand it. Will subscribers be allowed to block people? I mean, content creators be able to block people from their own channel? I think you mean yes, con yeah. content creators. Be yeah, it'll be just like YouTube in that regard. Um, you know, on YouTube, you can block people from your channel who get out right. of hand or who spam all kinds of crazy links. Uh, so you, yeah, there'll be a block feature that you can use both as a, as you know, when you own your channel as also on your social media feed, or if you're an admin of a page or a group, uh, and also from your actual online marketplace that's in Mar in Lighthouse. So if you're putting up products and people just come trolling your products and making fun of you and, and you can block them, absolutely. So that's, it's just a part of you controlling your experience on social media is to learn how to use the block button wisely. Great. Yeah. Great. Um, have so you been seeing live streams? You said there's going to be live streaming, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, there's a, a live streaming feature for, uh, for through your video channel. Because when I say this, I hope people understand what I'm saying. Every person that's that signs up with a profile on Lighthouse, you automatically get a social media news feed just like you would any other platform. But you also have an option to have a you have a free video channel sitting there waiting for you to, to create. To you know, upload your thumbnail, your cover photo, upload videos, create your own video channel. You also have a marketplace sitting there waiting for you to fill up with products to sell. So every time you upload a video, it automatically creates a post on your social media, which goes into your and other people's news feeds. Mm -hmm. It's free, free advertising. Same thing with your marketplace. You upload a new product, it immediately goes into as an announcement on your news feed uh, for other people to see. And what we try to integrate as something that's special, even um, um, for the video channel with the, with the comment section. So when people are watching your video and they're commenting, if they come across that video announcement in the newsfeed, as, it, as they're scrolling the newsfeed and they see that video and they'll see all those comments start to populate below that video announcement, even though they're not watching that video because the comments are mirrored between the video section and the social media feed. Mm. So if someone's not even watching your video, but they want to comment on that post that was created when you uploaded your video, that mm -hmm. comment will show up underneath the video when you're watching it. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. It's pretty, it's pretty fun. Now, when you're live streaming, those comments uh, won't be mirrored because it, it, it's a totally different comment section. Right. But yeah, you can still do a full-on chat. And in fact, you can even put the video player in corner mode at the, at above or in a, a small slim banner mode. And that way you can use the fullness of your screen to, to actually do the, the live chat. 
And for content creators, I want to encourage you. We're, we're allowing you know people to support you through stickers, just like you do with Super Chats on YouTube, uh, both during your regular pre previously made uploaded content or also your live stream. Uh, they can support you. We actually we tried to make it fun. We you know the stickers, um, you know it's like five, ten, twenty, fifty, and a hundred dollar options that people can do to support you. And if I think the five dollar option is a spark. So it's all it's all on the light theme, right? It's lighthouse. So it's like a spark, and then I think the ten dollar feature is um, is a candle. And mm -hmm. The twenty dollar feature is a lamp. Fifty dollar feature is a um, I can't remember what it is right now, but the hundred dollar feature is a flamethrower. So they can give you different forms of light uh, to support you, um, and those of course would pop up in the. They can in insert their question or their comment with their with their uh, sticker support. It's kind of like a super chat. So that you can see it during the live stream and respond to people just like normal, just like D Live, just like YouTube, and um, it's just not gonna censor your video and take it down midstream like it's happened to me on YouTube. I actually had a video taken down in the middle of my podcast. Yeah, that's happened to me as well. What were you talking about? I was talking about the Captain America, the first Avengers movie, and all of the predictive programming built into the entire storyline. <laughs> what for, you uh, for the yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow, I, I wouldn't think that would would be. I mean, that's pretty tame in the world of conspiracies. I I don't know. They just. Uh, I guess I played too many clips of. Oh, the actual... oh, oh, you were yeah yeah yeah. If you were using yeah the video stuff, well, heck, if you want to have fun, try to um, try to simulcast even thirty seconds of a major sporting event. Right. <laughs> See what happens. People people have trolled people in you know in that sense like. Oh, wait. Hey, we're going to break. Yes. <laughs> Back in three <laughs> minutes. I got lost. Mostly in Sean's eyes. You know, ladder to climb out of those. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if I'm talking... Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. It's you, me, Karen B, and special guest from Lighthouse, which could be the new big thing. You never know. Uh, Sean Griffin. Sean, are you still there? I'm still here. Karen, are you still there? I am. Wonderful. And I joined the Lighthouse group on Facebook already. Very, nice. very cool. How did you do it? That was with three eyes? Yes. Enjoy? It's called Lighthouse.com. It's got 12.2K members. Nice. Yeah, we had 8,000 of those members in the first two weeks. We've been up for about seven weeks now. Mm-hmm. But then they caught on and stopped us, suppressed uh, us. <laughs> you know, yeah. every time I hear something like that, I think, I mean, it's the old tricks are the best tricks. I keep thinking of, and you might be old enough to remember, remember the movie Tucker from years ago? No. Oh, you haven't seen the, the movie Tucker? Tucker was an automobile company that tried to start up after the, yes, and Peanut Gallery says excellent movie. Um, just yes, tried sir. to start up after the big, the big Detroit automakers were already established. And they weren't going to share. And Tucker had some fantastic. In fact, you can buy a, a Tucker automobile now. I mean, they're considered collectibles. I think they're all in six figures. And you know, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas both bought one. And I think Jeff Bridges uh, played Tucker in the movie. But he was basically they they wouldn't let him wouldn't let him in. They just did everything they could to make sure that car company was not going to be established. So uh, when, when you, you, you like anything, you know, when, when you're big, you don't, when you're the king of the hill, you're, you don't want any challengers. I mean, you say you do, but you really don't. So, um, yeah. before we get into yep. Tucker. Yeah. Tucker, 1948. Uh, you can buy you know, well, the links there in, in Skype. If you want to check it out, it's really interesting. If anyone hasn't seen the movie Tucker, definitely check it out. Fantastic movie. Uh, interesting story about American competition and how brutal it can be. And that Mark? was like when they made good movies back then. Yeah. 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 In fact, the, it, there was a, you know, they had that center, the center headlight that would turn depending yeah. on which way you were turning the car, which they still have never implemented now. But some of the, you know, but some of the auto automakers stole the other designs that yeah. they did. Uh, anyway. Uh, hey, hey, Mark. Yeah. I think um, Brian is asking, something I forgot to address earlier before the break about when, when creators are live streaming on the uh, Yes, because there's a minimum uh, sub count that you need in YouTube yeah. to live stream. Yeah. The minimum sub count on lighthouse is zero. 
<laughs> Great. So you can you can create a profile. You can create you fill out your channel, upload your you know your profile pic and your cover photo for your channel. Start uploading your videos or start live streaming. You can start from day one. Just you know bring your audience over. That's amazing. And so, how does Lighthouse make money? Well, there's four main ways mm -hmm. that that they'll generate revenue as a platform. Many of them are already used by the traditional platforms. For example, like, you know, when people give you a super chat on YouTube, did you know that YouTube takes 30% of that? Oh, yeah. I did know that. Yeah. I, and they, and they hold your money for two months, which is yes. crazy. Yes. I mean, I, so in I, addition to taking a 30% cut, they hold all of it for two months. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they Whoa. do. Yeah. And just think about the, the interest that they're gaining for two months on your money. Yeah. that they don't share with you, by the way. <laughs> so I actually used to be an investment planner uh, earlier in my life. And yeah, that is a that is unheard of. And this is why they can do that because the majority of content creators are not savvy in that regard. So they just, they just, they think, well, this is the only option. If they got the biggest number of users, they made the biggest reach. I'm going to use YouTube and just go ahead and take the 30% hit and not get that for two, two months, which is insane. We'll yeah. be able, we'll allow content creators to, um, uh, to get paid every week, once a week. And, uh, from all of their support stickers or all their, their sales from their marketplace. Um, oh, by, by the way, guys, speaking of support, right? When people love your content, they want to give you support, whether it's a super chat or whether it's, um, just through a one-time support or a reoccurring monthly support, mm -hmm. they can also do that for your social media profile. So if you're just a, if you don't make videos, if you don't sell products, but you're just at, a, at what we call an influencer, you know, you're, you're a brand, uh, you're a social media, you know, extraordinaire and people love what you're saying and posting about, you know, there's a lot of folks that do a lot of research into new, I would say new, it's not really new. It's what we, what many people would call true science or true medical science. And they're putting a ton of, of very valuable information on their social media pages. And there's posts sometimes took them weeks to collaborate the information and to confine it and make it palpable. And, you know, there's a lot that goes into, I mean, they're creating a blog, you know, and they're putting it up for free on social media and they have, they'll have, you know, hundreds of thousands of people following them. And then of course they put up their PayPal link. If anyone wants to donate to their work, we'll allow you to donate to their work directly from their social media profile page. Wow. Good stuff. So, yeah, we're excited. Very, very cool. Uh, but that's that's so just like with YouTube, they get a percentage of all the the support uh, when you purchase a super chat or you you uh, click for the the join button on some channels where you can do like monthly joining for incremental dollar amounts, and they'll take a percentage of that. So we'll be doing that as well, but it's not going to be thirty percent. I I can't tell exactly the percentage. I guarantee it's it's going to be less than half of that though. I'll just, I can't say that. So okay. we're we're not going to be gouging people like that. Um, we also will get a percentage of transaction fee for all the purchases in the marketplace. We'll also get a, um, we're offering people a, to purchase additional channels and additional stores and additional partners. So what that means is when you sell, when you like just start your first profile on Lighthouse, like I said before, you get a channel and a store connected to your profile, but maybe you, want to have a secondary profile because you have two different businesses or you have three different YouTube channels and you want to profile for each of them. Mm -hmm. Well, that means you could be selling different merchandise for each YouTube channel and three different stores on Lighthouse and, and all integrating them through the partner program. So each profile gets six free partners with the partner program to start. And with the six, you can use, you know, you can integrate and, um, you collaborate with the, with all kinds of people because there's not time limits on how long you're collaborating with somebody. You could collaborate with someone for just one video or you could collaborate with someone for years. So it just depends on the relationship you're, you're forging and what marketing efforts you're, you're trying to accomplish. So every profile, you get six free partners to work with to begin and you get a free channel and a free store. But if you want to purchase more channels or more stores or more partners, you can do that as well. Hmm. Yeah. Pe Peanut so, approves. He says, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there'll be people over time that, that, that get really good at the partner program. Cause they're going to, you know, these are the marketing gurus that are already successful on, on YouTube and other platforms. And they, they know how to connect and collaborate with other people. They're going to use up their six real quick and they're going to realize, Oh, I need more. So, but even in that, they're not, it's not going to be super expensive. It's going to be very, very affordable. Cause I promise you, if you're utilizing all six and you're doing it well, 
that that means you're making very good, very good connections, which are profiting you financially. So therefore you're, I mean, you'll have plenty of extra money to buy extra pro, um, partners or extra channels if you need. Awesome. That's Fantastic. great. Stick. Tell you what, let's do this. Let's go to, let's take a few calls and see if you, if you don't have a question for Sean, that's fine. We're not going to berate you and I won't put you on my blacklist or anything, but it's always helpful to stay relative. And yes, we can talk about the election. That's fine too. Cause my thumbnail is actually going to be with Joe Biden. So let's first go out to Washington on the West Coast, 360. What are we talking about? Hey, it's everyone's favorite Dottie. Hey, Dottie. Hey. What's happening? Um, so uh, a quick question for your guest. I apologize if you mentioned it already, but um, so YouTube uh, makes you get to a thousand subscribers before you can live stream on mobile and before you can monetize anything on your channel. Uh, will your platform have that same limitation at all? No, you'll be able to live stream from the start, from the, from Perfect. zero followers, zero subscribers. Um, you'll be able to to start live streaming as soon as you start a profile on Lighthouse. Dottie, Dottie, did you get here uh, late? She did. Must oh, I, I just, I have, I have, I have a lot of like problems following the chat and listening to the show at the same time. And so I like, I really have to try and like divide my, my attention, but it's very difficult for me. So it's all right. <laughs> we'll, we'll let it slide it's one of the this time, ones, but yeah, it's fine. it's fine. Okay. And then, um, the other thing uh, not to like bring the vibe down, which is so good right now, but okay. there's something weird that I'm noticing with the election shit. So yeah. a friend um, sent me a screenshot. He asked Siri the other day, how old was the president? And it said, Kamala Harris is 56 years old. Mm-hmm. Well, apparently a couple hours that Siri changed it back because I asked uh, another friend who had an iPhone. I said, "Hey, will you ask Siri this question?" And he said, uh, "No, she's saying Donald Trump is 74 years old because apparently people were freaking out about it, sharing memes, all this stuff, and so they like fixed that problem." But then I was driving into town yesterday, and okay. in someone's yard there was there was a big handmade sign that said congratulations president harris and i was just like what the hell is happening right now <laughs> like i i just i don't know uh i don't know what to think of it but it it, it just struck me as very very strange so yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, did the did the babylon b own that house with that sign <laughs> they just might you never know <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was very very weird. So very weird day yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Mark, did you know that Facebook actually started censoring the Babylon Bee? They they demonetized the Babylon Bee on Facebook. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, they they literally thought that their political humor was, you know, spreading false information. So they demonetized them. Oh, what a, what a perfect time for another platform that to open up that does not censor. Right, exactly. You can make all the satires, all the jokes you want. In fact, speaking of the the Harris issue that with the Siri thing, I saw that going around social media as well. And to me, like I think they've already been been kind of putting injecting this into the public discourse months ago before the election, when Nancy Pelosi was trying to call for a mental health evaluation of Donald Trump. So, mm-hmm. I think if Biden does actually be chosen as the elected. Within a month, they'll say he's mentally unfit. Harris has to take over. I don't know if they do that within a month. But again, you know, we haven't seen the the flip side of this. I, I know that right now, you know, everyone's not everyone. You know, there's a lot of people saying, oh, you know, Biden's guy. It's just a question of time before Trump surrenders, blah, blah, blah. But then there's this big contingency, and I'm sure you guys have seen it as well, which is the, they say, well, you know, the Republicans are going to make their big move, their big push you know, the, the big legal push and see what happens. And of course we're in uncharted territory if, if that's the case. So I don't know yet. I'm, I'm, I can't really make a call yet because it, the inauguration hasn't happened 
and the legal proceedings haven't really begun yet. You know, could we be going into official coup status? I don't know yet. I, it's too early to tell, even though we're a full week past the election now. So, um, anything else, Dottie? Uh, not much. Uh, me and uh, Bali Music Journey and Flat Plain, Oregon are most likely going to be planning a meetup for next month. So I will keep you guys in the loop and let you know when that's going to happen. But awesome. um, yeah, meet up, meet up. So yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Any shout outs before I send you off? Uh, shout out to all three of you and uh, Zulu One and the chat. Right on. All right. Have a good one, Dottie. Talk okay. soon. Bye. Love you guys. Bye bye. The and she just reminded me there's another meetup which I just did a promo for. It's going to be in Irvine Park outside of Los Angeles, California, November 14th, which is four days from now. So if you have any questions about it, just go to the video. There's all sorts of contact info. I know I'm not, I'm not going to be there, uh, but there's quite, quite, a, quite a few of the Los Angeles contingency will be attending. Let's go back to the phone lines. Let's go to 484 out in Pennsylvania. Are you there? Are you listening? What are we doing? Pennsylvania. Oh, Karen, you know who this might be. Hmm. <laughs> might be sleeping. Is he sleeping? Pennsylvania? All right, he's sleeping. Five, four, three, two, one. You are now muted. Let's go out to 864 out in South Carolina. Just, 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 Jack, 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 Jack. Jack, 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 Jack. You ever need to record a sound bite Just for that, Jack? Jack? <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I could, but, you know, what would I play it with? I, that, that's anyway. true. And you do it live so well every time. What uh, What's happening out there? Not much. I'm listening to uh, Sean's big plan here, and I'm digging it, man. It sounds like a great idea, and uh, I, I give you mad props for taking the chance and trying it out and I hope it all works out. Okay. Um, curious about, uh, Sean's perspective on the universe or cosmology. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. And you don't have to, you don't necessarily have to answer all of that, Sean, but go ahead. Um, I actually, I'm the marketing director for Lighthouse, but I have a channel called Kingdom in Context where we talk about biblical cosmology all the day long. In fact, I actually have a beanie sitting in front of me on my desk that has one word on the beanie, and it is firmamentalist. <laughs> That's a tough word to say. Awesome. There you go, Jack. I can dig it. Jack, he was at Flat Fest, <laughs> my friend. Remember that? Oh, no, I didn't uh, I didn't meet him directly or hear from him directly, but I'm, well, let, I'm glad let, that he was there. Yeah. Hey, Jack, just, just be encouraged, brother. There are people that are at high levels of business that know that we've been lied to about big topics like that. They they just, you know, Fantastic. they're just not on, they're just not on social media making posts about it because they're running companies. Um, so like they're super busy. They just don't have time for that, you know? Um, so be encouraged there. I mean, the, the information I know, especially since 2017, the information has been suppressed in all forms of public media. Um, as much as possible and but even still it, that people are hearing and talking about it even still it's just you're just not seeing you know videos recommended to you on youtube about it anymore but the at whatever initial splash 2014 to 2017 had it made a big splash and there's a lot of people that that are questioning and asking very very intelligent questions and some of them have already come to their own conclusion because they have been in enough sectors of business and politics to realize there's so many lies that are being purveyed across right. uh, the people that it doesn't surprise them if this was just another one of those lies. And there's always that layer of truth within those deceptions where you can kind of figure it out as well. So yeah. 
Yeah, I'm really, um, I'm really, I'm, I'm proud of you guys for putting it together, and I can't wait to be involved with it. And uh, shout out to Mark Sargent and Karen B, and to you, Sean, and to everyone in Zulu's chat, including Dottie. And uh, yeah, y'all take care, and y'all bless. All right, see you, man. Thanks. See ya. All right, let's see if we can grab two more before the break. Let's find out. Let's grab six one. Ooh, no, not you. Sorry. Uh, let's do six one two. Sorry about that. Eight four five. Six one two. It's you, me, Karen B, and special guest Sean. Are we? Are we listening? Are we talking? What are we doing? What's that? I'm here. I'm ready? No, not you. Shut up, Sean. <laughs> so, uh, C- Kristen, are you there? Or are you just? Are you just listening? Hello. She's out in Minnesota. Her address is. <laughs> no. Her social security number is Minnesota. No. Fine. Yo, up there near the Iron Range, don't you know? Don't you know? You do the uh, whole black powder rifle championships. <laughs> Fish for pike. Okay, let's um <laughs> let's go to Oh heck. Um let's do let's jump down to Dallas. 214. To me and Karen B. Cheer us up, Dallas. <laughs> hello, this is Jan, and hello to Mark and Peanut and Sean. Oh, my goodness. What a brilliant, brilliant uh, idea, and it was fascinating. And I was thinking about when you guys were first putting it together, I was thinking you were trying to harvest a wheat field with a pair of scissors. This <laughs> must have been so amazingly tedious but what a beautiful idea and the name of it is wonderful oh thanks i'm glad you actually like it we uh we've spoken with um people that have loved the name and we spoke with people that they just it took some time to warm up to it because they didn't see it spelled i think when people actually see the logo inside the word uh when they see it spelled it makes a little more sense to them but um but thank you yeah it's it, it was like taking scissors to a wheat field it it was because you're trying to figure out what you can't make it so foreign that people don't want to use it you have to have a level of familiarity where people can naturally gravitate over to a different platform but at the same time you can't have all the negative aspects of what's already out there so it did it was there was a lot of consultation and uh, there was a lot of um, heated debate on certain concepts and a lot of late nights but um, we're, we're getting close to launch so we're very very excited Excellent. Oh, God bless you. I I believe that the uh, president would love to meet you. And uh, I just, it's so much of what America is about, about the uh, right to free speech and bear arms and so forth. And your company and the people sound like they really stand up for America and what she is truly about. Just wanted to thank you. And to the uh, veterans tomorrow, to uh, have a blessed Veterans Day. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Very welcome, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and you have a good evening, Jan, and we will talk, I'm sure, soon. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. Hi, can we take one more for the break? I think we can. Let's go to the backup capital of the country, Denver, Colorado, 720. It's you, me, Karen B., and Sean. What's happening? Denver. Pick up Denver. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Anyway, next caller. Hey. Hey, that's fine. Uh, oh, you know what? We're gonna stay out in Colorado. Let's do Loveland, Colorado. I'm I'm from Colorado. Been there 20 years. All right, nine seven zero. You're up to bat. You're gonna do a swing and the miss. You're gonna hit something. Hey, what's up? Hey. This is uh, Brightside Bear. I'm in Fort Collins, right next to Loveland. But yeah. Hey. Hey, right on. Um, yeah. This uh, this lighthouse seems freaking awesome. My uh. Just had a group. I had kind of a libertarian-ish group on Facebook that I've had for a few years called Libertatum Libertatum Memes, and it had almost. I was getting to ten thousand uh, people in there, and they just recently took that down. 
think two weeks ago, the Thursday before last. Oof. And I do, I do a bunch of artwork on Facebook and stuff too. And um, yeah, I'm just kind of getting tired of the whole platform. And it'd be awesome to kind of mix together, you know, making another group and being able to post videos and have my artwork on there and, you know, find other people to share it with. And yeah, for sure. Like an awesome yeah. idea, honestly. Imagine someone sees your amazing artwork and they have um, a channel that reviews our work basically, you know, cause there are channels out there that will, there are art channels that will review local artists or up and coming artists and, uh, and they have a large following and they, you know, pick you up and they see that what you're doing and all they got to do is literally connect with you in the partner program so that then all their followers or subscribers will be notified whenever you make a post about your artwork. That's, yeah, that's yeah. how simple it is. That's Suddenly, awesome. instead of you reaching 10,000 people within one post, you could reach an extra 90,000 people if you, if you found the right partner. So, or even more, it just awesome. depends on, and you know, Facebook, if you want to reach, yeah, yeah, if you want to reach people like that on Facebook, you're, you're paying a lot of money for ads and stuff like that. And like, yeah, exactly. Pretty cool that you could. And, you know, we didn't really talk about that, but that is the, actually the, the other, the fourth way that I was going to mention about, you know, we will be selling promotion options for people who have channels or people, and you can only promote videos that you upload. You can promote your, your profile itself. If you want to, you can promote your pages that you own or your groups that you've started to, you know, to find more members, or you can promote your, your, uh, storefront, your marketplace. So, uh, we will allow promotions, but what we're not going to allow is big corporate advertisers to come in and uh, promote in ways that are going to manipulate our our usage of the platform and how we interact with the average person. And that's where Facebook and YouTube got themselves in trouble, is they allowed large corporate advertisers to steer what the, what kind of platform, what kind of content that they would allow on their on their platforms. So we're not going to do any of that. We want it to be more about the common man, you know. So it's it's um, we're very excited. And for example, I by the way, um, I used to. I used to live in the Fort Collins area for three years. Just recently, uh, moved oh, nice. a little. Yeah, I still live in Northern Colorado, but uh, we're just we're trying to not tell exactly where we live because we have another channel where a lot of people like to want to come visit us. But we just gotta. We, our time is very limited, so we decided not to disclose our location anymore. <laughs> hey, we're uh, hate, to, hate to cut cut you off, caller, but we are going to our final break. So thank you, no, thank good. you. We'll be back. Thanks, right. Yep, Thank, we'll be back in you. three minutes. Don't go anywhere. If you have any last minute questions for Sean or me, yeah, maybe Karen too. Welcome back to Strange World, part four of four. It's you, me, Karen B, and Sean Griffin from Lighthouse. Could they be the rival, the, the, the everything killer? Could they be the iPad of social media? Maybe. We'll have to find out. Sean, you still there? I'm still here. Right on. In fact, the, the last caller, his um, his idea or his question is actually kind of correlated with uh, the previous caller, when she was asking about live streams and, and how many subs you might have to have. And the reason why we have not only just so much censorship of particular types of groups on Facebook, but also you have a, a standard of, of subscribers before you can live stream on YouTube is because in the technical world, no matter what you see on your in your handheld phone or on your desktop, uh, behind the scenes, all that information comes from somewhere and has to be stored and transferred and relayed from places, and that costs a lot of money. And so this is where a lot the average person doesn't understand how they have the internet staring them in the face, and so companies want to cut costs. Um, in addition to their political bias and leanings, they want to cut costs and they want to figure out, you know, how can we um, how can we promote what they feel might be the best parts of their platform? And then how can we limit the chatter, the noise, the the stuff that they feel is too small to, to really cause a stink if they cut them like that gentleman's art group, right? They right. didn't think he's going to really cause a problem. He's only got 10,000 members in the art group. Or if you're coming on and you have a channel, if you don't have a thousand followers already, then you can't monetize your channel or you can't live stream like with YouTube um, because they were so worried about all that, all that data and the costs associated with the servers with that's what I was mentioning much, much earlier before our first break is our chief architect is actually brilliant. I mean, the, the guy's a genius and he created a specialized code that, that the server, uh, I won't name the actual servers that we use, but that the actual server 
uh, company accept it and, and, and implement it into their, their system so that we can actually spin up servers when we need them and then spin them down when we don't need them. And therefore, um, we can facilitate 100 users. And 90 seconds later, we can facilitate 500 million. Really? Yeah. So if we got videos that go viral or posts that go viral or whatever, yeah, it's revolutionary. Awesome. Again, yep. uh, all my best to you. You know, I, I hope and pray <laughs> that you that you catch a break on this one because if you draw the ire of some of the bigger companies, you know, who, who knows what stories they might spin. Uh, but sounds great. Sounds well, wonderful. That's, that's the best part is we're actually creating – that was one of the first conversations we had back last October was how are we going to counter the inevitable slander that's going to come our way? The moment oh, yeah. we start trying to compete with these guys, it's going to, you know, I can already see the headlines now, you know, um, it'll, it'll be, you know, everything from, you know, we're somehow uh, colluding with Ukraine and Russia to somehow we're white nationalists. To some, you, know, oh, just, yeah. you, you can just pick a headline and they'll just put yeah. lighthouse's name in there. So I can easily see that coming. We, we, all the owners, uh, when we were talking with them, we're, they, they understood the game, how the media game is played. And I just tried to remind them, hey, we build a following with this lighthouse. We, when people come on and actually use it and realize they can you know, grow their, their channel or grow their business and be unhindered while they do it, we're literally creating our own media outlet. We can make any and we can defend ourselves if we have to. Yeah, and yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, and we can be heard. Absolutely. And you know what? Even I'm a big believer, as you know, that that even bad publicity is free. Right. And so if somebody comes out with a story, it's like, you know, a uh, conspiracy based lighthouse is a super spreader event for bad ideas. You know, something like that. <laughs> it's uh, like I tied the virus into that. Um, let's pick up one more call. Let's Pick a couple more calls, and then we'll keep talking about this until the show ends. Because I got to get in one of my favorites from eight four five out in New York. <clears throat> this is where I do singing. If you haven't heard my show before, Sean, the sun will come mm -hmm. out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> i fucking love it i love what's it what's happening Zulu? oh my god hey mark sean karen love you guys i've been listening like so intently and i am a douche because i never heard when you said it's coming online december or is it online already december. no december okay because i definitely want in i okay. can't wait We'd love to Everything have you. sounds great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds great, man. Like, I mean, uh, sorry. But well, let's say for anybody out there that's talking truth and they want to hear truth, I mean, this could be the last oasis of sanity in the uh, in the battle to fight censorship in this country. And uh, so I'm I'm rooting for you. Trust me on that, you know, because everyone in the Flat Earth community has kind of been holding our breath. It's like, oh, please don't let them turn Flat Earth into, you know, I was nervous, and I'm sure you saw the clip as well, you know, when the, the little Senate subcommittee thing, when they brought <laughs> Google and YouTube out there, yeah. government officials are asking <laughs> what they're going to do. And, you know, they said, well, we're going to recommend it less. And it absolutely, they absolutely were true to their word, but they didn't say they were going to kill it. But I was just waiting for that. It's like one day I was going to wake up and it's like, oh, yeah, we decided to kill Flat Earth. It's like, damn it. And the reason why they had to do that is because of Section yeah. 230, what we mentioned earlier. They can't just well, – and this is where they're getting in trouble now because they are intentionally killing channels they don't like. But right. they're not supposed to. They're supposed to allow everyone to speak freely. Otherwise, they turn themselves into a publisher and not a platform. Right. And that's why Congress, even three years ago, was looking at YouTube going – how are you going to do this without basically indicting yourself, um, incriminating yourself, according to the Communi Communication Decency Act? Right. But now, for whatever reason, no one's calling them to the carpet. No one cares. So now yeah. they're allowing them to not only change the algorithms to manipulate what people see and hear, but they are just straight up de completely deleting channels off of YouTube for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Content yep. they don't like. 
They yeah. just they just have to get rid of it. And well, the it. And notifications don't, don't and don't like. The the adpocalypse was no right. joke. For those people that missed what happened, the ad adpocalypse, the, uh, the the sponsors came to him and said, "You can't just put our our ads on any video. We want some say in this. And if you don't, we're going to start pulling the uh, the ads and your and our money." And YouTube was like, "We're YouTube. What are you going to do?" And they did. And so YouTube came back and said, "All right, we got to change the rules. Here's what's going to happen." <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It was there was a per that term the adpocalypse was a perfect term for it because yeah. it got it was ugly out there. It was, and what it was, what I've never understood absolutely. about that from what? the advertiser's perspective is why would they care what they're I mean people that watch flat Earth videos they they also watch Fox News and CNN and they also yes. watch the the History Channel and they also watch every other form of YouTube right. video that comes up as well because they have varied interests. You and know so, full well, though, it only right. takes one suit to get his feathers ruffled because he's yeah. watching a video that he thinks is offensive. Right. And then all of a sudden, his company right. is is there. It's like, we can't have our company tied to this. And, you know, it really literally takes a very, very small amount of people to get outraged. And then everything f goes downhill from there. It's like, we need to call YouTube and enough enough phone calls. And then they can start getting together and a couple guys over a power lunch decide, it's like, yeah, you know what? We should just pull our advertising from it. It's like, yeah, yeah, unified front and it works. Yeah, it's stupid. Scared it's, the hell out of them. It's stupid. We, we buy cars, we buy houses, we buy clothing. I mean, how dumb are you? It, as long as people are seeing your ads, it's yeah. ridiculous. It, it and, is. And meanwhile, yeah, I, have a, I have a quote for you. What is it, sir? Oh, go ahead. No, okay. Go ahead. If liberty, if liberty means anything at all, it means the right to tell people what they do not want to hear. And okay. interesting, who it is? Who is it? George Orwell. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That. Yeah. George Orwell's mm -hmm. ghost has been uh, a frequent guest of 2020. He has been all over the place. Yeah. That man, I don't know who told, who gave him all the, all the, the dirt that was going to happen, but I've never seen a book get more and more relevant after 1984. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, because I was, I'm yeah. old enough. I read it. I was, it was required reading, obviously, when uh, when I was mm -hmm. going through school because yeah, I graduated in, in in 85, and it's like, but now, whew, last last decade, it's just been getting more and more relevant so it's funny it was still required reading at the school i went to and had graduated in 1998 high school and we read it our senior year and that became i was an avid 98 reader. 98 yeah 98 wow. oh my god you said yeah oh my god that's awesome i'm 40 don't ever get old Dude, <laughs> don't get no. old what's that young whippers no no in 95 that's too funny learn age Karen, you're never going to get old. I graduated in 85. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I still I still have traded in, though. The 80s were fantastic. People don't even know, I mean, what, oh. what it was like. High school was the best time of my life. Yeah, oh, we had God. no idea what we were doing. So we had no backup things. plan. <laughs> we didn't care. <laughs> Did not care. Because uh, everything was cheap. All right. And easy. Hey, let, Go ahead. Uh, l let me run. I love you guys. Shout out to Karen, Mark, Sean, you guys, and Sean, I just, I cannot wait. This sounds fantastic. Awesome, brother. Spread the word. Yeah, tell yeah. all your peeps. Tell them to come over. Absolutely. Give us a try. Absolutely. Definitely. Shout out to Dottie's World, Waters Above, Bali Music, everybody in the chat, Steve Finneran. I love you guys. I love everybody. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I'll talk all right, to you man. later. All right. Talk to you soon, man. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Um, let's bring in, by the way, the phone lines just opened up, which is good timing. Number is 213-233-3998. That's 213-233-3998. And let's bring in Master Gunner, because I'm sure he's got a question or two. Master Gunner, Brian Burton, United States Army. Are you there, Master Gunner? Always. You know I'm always here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Especially since I get tomorrow off. Because you took wait, you get more than a week off because of the election? Oh no, remember, I had to work last week. 
Oh, right. Because you're, can we, can we say that your boss got the, got the COVID? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, a yeah. quick He was story. dumb enough to go in and get tested. Oh. Yes. And do you know what they sent him home with? What? Cigarettes? Uh, that'd have been nice. No, what? nothing. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> just said, yeah, they just sent you. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the other thing. If you go in and get tested, they don't do it. They say, they say, oh, well, you have it or you don't have it. And that's it. You go home. There is nothing. They're, they're, they don't keep you overnight. They don't give you any drugs. Nope. Nope. And he came back to work Monday. <sighs> and He's fine but, the whole time. The no worst, problem. The worst part of that whole thing is now he is counted as a case because that's all anyone cares about right now is case numbers. No yes. one talks about the death numbers, which are still ridiculously low for November. No, they talk about cases. 100,000 cases a day now. Anybody else dying? Nope. Doesn't matter. 100,000 cases a day. Say it could go to 200,000 by the end of the year. A day. No, I get tomorrow off because I spent 22 years of my life just to get one day a year off. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So yay for me. Um, no. <laughs> 22 years in a tank. Fantastic. Yes. It was. Very, very Best time of my life. I love that tank. The lighthouse thing, though. Love it. Sounds mm -hmm. great. Awesome. Thanks, man. I do. Yeah. That's a well-needed thing. I will confess I will be interested to see how you're going to handle Congress when they come to you, though, because they will. <laughs> well, but it may not be me. By that time, we may have hired a, somebody well, you to as... be our public relations. But <laughs> yes. yeah, I hear you, though. I hear you. We, we, we understand that that is a real potential possibility. We do. Because but we I... know that if we allow people to talk freely, not just about the topic of the shape of creation, but also any politics uh, or about any, you know, potential, uh, you know, pandemics or whatever, you know, the, the Rona 21 that's coming. Like if we allow people to talk freely about any of that stuff, um, we know what's going to happen there. The people that don't want that may call us to talk to us, but we're, we're prepared to talk to them. Well, I hope they do come after you because that is free advertisement. Free advertising. Stupid. Yeah. So what I was saying earlier, we're gonna have our we can just live stream it on our own platform so people can get the unfiltered, unedited version. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Live stream telling them to go F themselves. <laughs> yeah, I'll just carry yeah. I'll just carry a body cam <laughs> oh, in with me. So and live stream it. Yeah. And again, the timing couldn't be better because as you know, politics is going to be consuming the nation even more than usual. Uh, for the next, well, we, we don't know how long, but the next two or three months, especially, yeah, if you guys open this thing next month, whoo, great, because YouTube, YouTube is going to be throwing people off as fast as they get on. Mm -hmm. Well, also, remember who's going down right now. <laughs> I, go ahead. Fox. Is it, is it? Oh, Fox yeah, Fox News. Going down. Yeah, Fox News lost 90% of their viewership. What? Yes. Yeah. 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 They wow. did. Got to remember, they were the big. They were the big beacon. They were the the what what the Republican Party was holding on to. At least something in mainstream that, that that's going along with us. And then election night, they were calling states blue before anybody else. <laughs> they and up... they've been censoring crap all week. The news yeah. department. Yeah. In fact. I didn't fact check this because I don't fact check shit, whatever. Rumor has it. So like, um, <laughs> uh, what's his name? Uh, Crow Steven Crowder on YouTube. Yeah. Has more viewers than CNN and Fox. I believe it. On the election night, he had 500,000 people watching his live stream. And then they cut it. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's serious right so, there. And look what they did, by the way. Here's here's your competition. Look look how they shut down Bit, bit Shoot on Election Day for six and a half hours. Yep. Yes, they did. And Bit uh, Shoot comes out and they and they ki didn't kill them. They killed them with, uh, well, you know the tech better than I do, with their, their provider that was providing right. the stuff for Bit Shoot to where Bit Shoot had to make phone calls. It's like, uh, it wasn't yep. Bit Shoot themselves. Their actual hosting domain. Yeah, they attack them from the source, which is un unheard of. But we've seen that happen um, also with Dr. Simone Gold, the American Frontline Doctors. They had their website taken down temporarily, too. 
Yeah. So this is this to me is them playing their final card to say, we we if we can control you, we will, it, no matter, at all costs. So yeah. we Lighthouse has already been looking into various forms of decentralization for months, even before we launch, because the 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 people that are putting this together, they're savvy. They know they 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 see all this stuff, and I definitely try to inform them as much as possible about current events on all this type of suppression and censorship. And they know um, a decentralized platform is needed, not just for Lighthouse, but for many other people. Because, I mean, I don't know if you guys ever watched Tim Pool or Tim Cast, but he was talking about this previously with the creator of Minds.com, and how they were brainstorming live on a live stream different forms of decentralizing the platform because they realized, even with blockchain it's not as viable as they would like it to be for the average person. So therefore they're, they're looking at all these other creative ways uh, to try to figure out decentralization to avoid Google just coming in and saying, well, we'll just take your, your domain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. It's terrible. Well, I'm going to run. I know you need a couple of minutes to get all this information out to everybody. Oh, yeah. right, 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 right. We'll you have a good night. Do some plugs and then we'll, um, we may pick up one more call. So thank you, Gunner. Yeah, good night. All right, see you, man. Thanks. Good night. So let's do the plugs now so we don't have to rush at the end. We still have uh, seven minutes to go in the show. How can people, if they want to learn more about Light... Sam, what I'm doing there? This Light is not a valid House. menu option. What was that? Is everyone, is, there, is everyone still there? No, oh, hanging up. Sean, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I I'm thought sorry. of a one-liner, another one-liner for you. What? The revolution will not be televised, it, but it will be live-streamed. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, and by the way, people keep saying, oh, you know, this will be this massive blackout. They're going to take out down the, the whole social media infrastructure. It's like you don't build up a such a wonderfully complex and completely saturating social media web and then just tear it down on a whim. You just don't. You want to leave it up as long as possible, which is why, yeah, it's, the, the end is going to be in HD. It's going to be live streamed. <laughs> it's, you, you have to. You can't. Yeah. You're not going to let six billion smartphones out there and not be able to push the narrative. You're not going to put them out there and then just turn off the network. You save that till the very end. Project Bluebeam is no good unless people can see it. Damn straight. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, Project Bluebeam or whatever. Yeah, whatever it is, you know, you you can't. You, you got to get the narrative out, so the network has to be up. You only tear de- tear it all down at the very end when you know we get to that ugly stage. Um. So, Sean, if people want to know more about this, and they should, how do they? What what what, what can they do? Do we wait till December? Can they contact you? Is there something else they can look at in the meantime? Is there any things they can look up? What? Yeah. We- We've got a ton of information at lighthouse.com, the group on Facebook. So if you're not on Facebook, uh, go to go to MeWe and search for lighthouse.com, the group. And then um, we're, I hate to even say this, we're on Twitter, but we never use it because it's just, it, it's just not preferable. But um, too. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's, a, Twitter is its own little sphere of, of unpleasantness. So we, you can go to Lighthouse is the biggest place because that's where we have the most information that's been put up on Lighthouse.com, the group on Facebook. And we put all types of information in the announcements and the pin posts. I've got interviews that show actual live artwork from the site. I even put up a, um, an announcement recently that starting this Friday will be my first webinar that I'm doing an open call and invitation for anyone that wants to join the webinar. I can only take 100 at a time right now. And then I'll be doing a live presentation of the site and doing a Q&A. Um, in a live webinar every Friday for the next six weeks. Awesome. Wow. Really, yeah. really cool. Um, other than that, you you're still pretty confident this thing's going to go up by December? Yes. Yeah. We're, I mean, they're, uh, we have a separate site that we get to see all the progress. And uh, yes, everything is looking beautiful. It's looking, it, they're actually doing exactly what, what was designed. And we have a team of more than 30 people working on this uh, as far as programmers go. So they are 100 percent. They're they're still on target. And we're honestly the biggest part about all this wasn't even the programming side. It's not even the development of the site. It's the back end side, the legal, the financial um, uh, and just more importantly, the legal, because it, it's taken forever just to get through the the terms of service with all the lawyers 
um, so that we can actually protect the platform properly um, in case people try to troll it in, a, in, in detrimental ways or if people try to um, try to, you know, try to take us down from a variety of means or tactics. So just just the legal process has been extensive, extensive uh, efforts to make sure that we're insulated properly. And like I said, we're already we're already looking at other ideas to protect ourselves um, through decentralization because we understand what's going on out there. And the the forces that be that have, like, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Facebook is building its own city. Do you guys aware of that? No. <laughs> in, Cali- in California, outside San Francisco, they're building their own city. Kind of like the... Like oh, the, the did they have room to build their own city? They would have had to acquire something. I mean, because that's prime real estate, so... Well, they're making, you know, <laughs> several billion dollars a month. So it's not... Um, so they're, they've got over 35,000 employees. You ever wonder how there's so many people fact-checking your opinions? Right. They've got, I mean, <laughs> and that's just, that's just Facebook. Bots. Yeah. <laughs> Apple, many people already know that Apple has its own conglomerate uh, building complex. It's like a mini city. But yeah. Facebook is building one bigger than that with, the, with outdoor campuses and dormitory housing. And, I mean, it's going to be shops and plazas and entertainment venues. I mean, it's literally its own city. Um, same thing with uh, Samsung and Sony. They're doing the same concepts as well. But there's an overarching push for these large tech companies that have all found themselves being ran by people that are extremely left-leaning in their political ideology that they're now trying to shape policy for the whole country. And that's, that is a very, very dangerous situation because they become the new media, which means they control the narrative on how that policy is voted upon and determined through the democratic republic process that we have so this is where they're going to control that power at all costs we understand that we really do we've had long talks about it and we're going to we're going to give it our best shot yes i'm 100 percent confident that not only because of what we're offering no one's offered and it's uniquely done and it's well done but we are behind the scenes we're we're taking large strides to make sure that we're here for the long haul very very cool excellent yeah um, and I know you're trying to be diplomatic, Sean, but um, <laughs> what you just described, what they're, what's going on here with these platforms and them trying to shape uh, uh, public opinion, and they're inv- basically involved in social engineering of the country. And that's not really dangerous. That's some serious freaking bullshit. <laughs> it's not okay. This is not fucking okay. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> You're, but, you're right. You're right. Like when, when they should be really, really pissed off about this stuff, they should be, right. you know, fighting mad. And so everybody should go check out this new platform because um, we need to do something. Yeah. <laughs> you now, know? This, this now is... take take fighting mad and replace it with so mad that you want to create competition to some of the most powerful oligarchy corporate tech companies in the world. Right. And that's what that's what Lighthouse is doing. Hell yeah. Well, um, my my thoughts and prayers are with you on this one because it is going to be a hell of a struggle. And what a perfect time to do it, though, during the most tumultuous year and probably going into 2021. That, so, we're, we're the light at the end of the dark tunnel. There you go. With that, we are going to say goodbye to our guest, Sean Griffin. Uh, the music is going to queue up here in a second. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm sure we'll have you on again. Uh, we'll try to have you on again just before you go live. How's that sound? Sounds great. Okay. Uh, the music is going to queue. So say goodnight, Karen. Good night, Karen. Say goodnight, Sean. Good night. Thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, see, he didn't crack a joke. He's professional all the way. <laughs> we'll be back. Same flat time, same flat channel. Be sure to be there.